Hi, I'm Misha Bruger Gosman. From the inside out, the art of conversation with myself. The ongoing conversation or dialogue we have with ourselves is arguably the most important. It is the well from which all motivation springs forth. For instance, right now, I could be thinking, I am going to crash and burn. This is going to be awful. There's no way this is going to go well. Or what I choose to believe is that all of your lives will be forever changed, and you will all go out and cure cancer and instigate world peace. That is what I choose to cling to. As a classical singer, like Charlotte, I have a lot of conversations with the dead. And uh, there are a lot of things my body and mind have to be told before you actually hear sound. For instance, backstage, I'm usually talking myself off the ledge, trying to convince myself to move forward, swallowing the fear, checking to make sure I have no lipstick on my teeth, that my hair isn't going to fall on my face, that my dress is on properly, that a boob isn't hanging out all number of things that could go wrong, I expect will go wrong. And then I come out, I see all of you, I am immediately calmed and assured and reassured of my responsibility to you. I come to my spot. Sometimes my pianist is about to start playing, sometimes the conductor is about to play the or indicate the downbeat for the orchestra, and I I'm focused on looking pristine, like I'm in total control, and wondering what the first words are. <laughs> and then, there is breath, but before the breath, there is posture, and before the posture, there's alignment. And with alignment comes a good breath, and when you take a good breath, it has to be well-timed, it has to be perfectly in time, it has to be devoid of tension, it can involve the jaw, can involve the tongue, has to raise the soft palate, and then you have to think about the consonant. When the consonant comes, sometimes there's a consonant, sometimes there's not. Sometimes the vowel is open, sometimes the vowel is closed. Sometimes it's a mixed vowel with the tongue and the lips. Sometimes it's an open ah, which is the worst thing ever. <laughs> and all of that is running through my mind as you watch my pristine, well-together, beautiful dress. And you know from the expression on my face exactly what it is I'm trying to tell you, and you're sucked into me. And that's my responsibility. And the conversation that you're not privy to is none of your business, because I'm meant to make you feel like I'm in total control. Which I am. <laughs> and the things I tell myself as a singer are relax, have fun, give nothing away. You are, along with the music, enough and breathe. The thing is, while I was pinpointing all of these factors and all of these specifics to my process and my technique and my motivation, in my early career and in my early formation, I was also ballooning throughout my 20s into a morbidly obese 350-pound singer. And the dialogue and the conversation that I must have had to have had, that I must have had to have had with myself to get to a point where I was putting my health so at risk was one of denial. For me, I was never motivated by self-loathing. I never ate to console I never told myself that I wasn't worth it. I never ate in secret. I was a proud eater. I was performing in all aspects of my life. And I lived in denial. The talk that I told myself eventually stopped making sense, which is what led to me wanting to lose weight. And it's different for everyone. What happened for me 
was that the math didn't add up. All that I was and all that I'd accomplished and all that I had in my life did not equal somebody who should be so negligent in their health. And I knew that there were enough people watching that it made a difference whether or not I lost weight. So the things I told myself while I was losing weight was think of food as fuel, not as sport. <laughs> Don't focus on the number. Focus on how you feel and how your clothes fit. Run your own race. For me, like my job, losing weight was a solo sport. And breathe. I love sports. I'm a huge sports fan, but I hate to exercise. I really only started exercising because I told myself that the only way that I would avoid the dreaded weight loss plateau was to start exercising. Now, for those of you who have never gone through the agonizing journey of, learning, of losing weight, the plateau is when you get to that immovable number on the scale, it will not, for any force from heaven or hell, move at all. And you're like, here I am in the plateau. <laughs> but I was not going to reach the plateau. I was going to start exercising, get my metabolism all going right before I got there so that my weight loss would continue seamlessly through my transition. So the year before I had committed to losing weight, I had gone to this horrible just evil Bikram yoga class. <laughs> now, for those of you who do not know, Bikram yoga is the hot yoga. 90 minutes, 26 postures, two breathing exercises. I showed up. I was in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I was fat. I was wearing a sweatsuit, but I saw yoga. I only saw you. I was like, yoga? I can do yoga? So I showed up. I was late. I had a face cloth for a towel and a styrofoam cup full of water and a bunch of half-naked skinny bitches in front of me. <laughs> and I was none too pleased, but stubborn, stubborn, so stubborn. I was not going to be outdone by anything, including yoga. But I vowed to myself that if I got out of this temporary hell, that I would never go back. <laughs> so as I was trying to avoid the plateau, I thought to myself, hmm, I like group exercise, but I don't like to be yelled at. I don't want the mm -t 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 -t. I don't want that. I don't want someone yelling at me, telling me that we're going up the hill. I don't want any kind of fantasy. I just wanted somebody to be focused on me in a group. No one could talk to me and that we would all be in a singular goal and that I'd have to do one-stop shopping. I didn't want to have to go lift weights. I didn't want to have to do a like 10K run afterwards and I thought, oh crap, it's that yoga. <laughs> so I went and the second class, I knew I was gonna be a teacher because I knew no one would ever have the hell that I had experienced. And I knew that if I saw the hellish dialogue going on behind the eyes of my students, that I'd be able to help them. And I tell you, when I practice, and when I teach, and when I sing, why does it happen? That's me. The two incarnations of me, singer, yogi, but they're both saying the exact same thing. Don't panic, it'll all be over soon. <laughs> I would encourage you to examine the nature of the conversation you are having with yourselves. Bonnie Raitt said, turn out the lights, turn down the bed, turn down these voices inside my head. Ron Sexsmith said, secret heart, what are you made of? What are you so afraid of? How do you talk to yourself? Are you helpful? Are you discouraging? Would you say the same things to a close friend or family member that you claim to love? 
In my experience, the answers to these questions are ever-changing, but it's in the asking that we get closer to true awareness, presence, energy, empathy, and contentment. Thank you so much. Thank you.